Welcome to today's screencast. This is for Unit 1, Anatomy and Physiology. Section 2, Muscle Fibre Types. So today's screencast is going to discuss not only muscle fibre types, but importantly their structure and function, and linking those two together. And that's really important for understanding how to write at merit and distinction level. Okay, so in a skeletal muscle you have a structure that looks something like this and you'll see that the skeletal muscle is uh, broken down into bundles and then these are slowly broken down and down until eventually you have what's called the muscle fibre. And these little strands are what make up your skeletal muscle. Now these fibres come in three different forms and that's really what we're interested in today. So the first type is called type 1 fibres. Now these are the fibres that are quite commonly read and importantly are very much used in aerobic activities, long distance, so for example marathon running or long distance cycling. Type 2A muscle fibres are pink in colour and these are the muscle fibres that we use when we're doing something that's a mixture of both short and long activity. So for example playing a game sport such as football. Our third type of muscle fibre is type 2B and this is the muscle fibre we use for short, sharp, explosive activities and in sport this could be something like the 100 metre sprint. Now we need to look at these in a little bit more detail. So if we go through the basics, for a type 1 muscle fibre it's capable of slow muscle contractions. It's red in colour and they tend to fatigue slowly. So it's the, these are the muscle fibres that we use in long duration activities. But in order to be able to achieve merit and distinction criteria, we need to be able to explain why these basics are in place. So the first question is, why is it that type 1 muscle fibres are very slow at contracting? Well, this is because type 1 muscle fibres use mitochondria to produce their energy. They turn oxygen into energy and this process is called aerobic respiration. Now this process is quite slow. So for example if we've got Mo Farah going for a run he has to breathe the oxygen in, it has to pass through the lungs into the bloodstream, it then has to pass to the heart, then has to pass through the blood and eventually reach the mitochondria in the muscle tissue. So that's quite a long process and that's why it's so slow for these muscles to contract. It also takes a lot of breakdown through the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria to actually produce the uh, energy itself. So it's a very slow process and that's why type 1 muscle fibres are so slow. But one bonus is that they do fatigue very slowly. And this is because of the source of energy or fuel that they use. So they use stored fat and oxygen to split ATP and create energy. There's no waste byproduct, so there's nothing bad building up in our bodies that's going to stop us from exercising with these type of muscle fibres. So in theory, we have an unlimited amount of oxygen in the air, and we do have a huge amount of body fat that we can use, regardless of our outwardly appearance. And because of that, these muscle fibres, they have all the fuel they need, so they can just keep working, in theory, for a very, very long time. And that's why they fatigue slowly. Now what's important is to understand also what's in the muscle fibre. So again, because type 1 muscle fibres use mitochondria, they have a lot of it, which means we can utilise a lot of oxygen to make our energy. We also have a great blood supply to these muscle fibres, so they're always getting a supply of oxygen to turn into energy. There's also great reserves of, uh, of myoglobin, so great reserves of oxygen. So if we can't get enough oxygen in, we do have reserve supplies that we can use to turn uh, oxygen and fat into energy. Okay, so now let's go and look at the complete opposite end of the spectrum. So we've discussed type 1 muscle fibres, now let's look at type 2B. Now these are very different because these ones are capable of very fast muscle control. Contractions. Uh, they're very powerful, they're white in colour which makes them very easy to distinguish between type 1 
And because they're so fast and powerful, they fatigue very quickly. So these ones are commonly used in quick explosive movements. So in sport, weightlifting would be a great example where we use these muscle fibers. The question now we need to ask is why? Why is it that these muscle fibers are so quick and powerful but fatigue quickly? So the reason that they're so fast in contracting is down to how they uh, get their energy. So energy is produced without oxygen. And because of this, it's known as anaerobic. Now, there's a chemical reaction that takes place here, and this is called anaerobic glycolysis. And this is essentially how we produce energy without using oxygen. Now, this chemical reaction is, is really good, and it's really quick, and that's why type 2 muscle fibers can work so quickly. We have these things called glycolytic enzymes, and these are just uh, sort of chemicals within the body that turn our muscle stores of creatine phosphate into energy. So creatine phosphate is our fuel source, okay, uh, and we, we turn that into energy by using our glycolytic enzymes. And because this is so fast, we're able to produce muscle force very quickly. Now, of course, you'll notice that you might have heard of creatine before, and this is a supplement that some people use to boost their stores of creatine phosphate. And why do they do this? Well, because the problem with our type 2B fibers is that they do fatigue very quickly. We only have a limited store of creatine phosphate in our body. And when that runs out, we're no longer able to use those particular muscle fibers. So some people take creatine as a supplement to try and boost their stores of creatine phosphate and therefore they can use their type 2B muscle fibers more. They're white in color, uh, which makes them very different. And the reason for that is that uh, myoglobin, which hopefully you'll remember is the body's store of oxygen, uh, that's red in color. Okay, And that was the, uh, the fuel source that we spoke about earlier. Uh, when we spoke about type 1 muscle fibers. Well, type 2B muscle fibers, they don't need oxygen. So they don't need any myoglobin. So because of that, they are white. Okay, They don't have that pigment to color them. Now, we also discussed not only are type 2B muscle fibers fast, but they're also very powerful. The reason for that is that the muscle fibers themselves are actually larger. They also have a larger motor neuron, which means they're able to receive a greater amount of stimulation by the brain. Because of this, this allows them to be more powerful. Okay, so let's talk about the very last type of muscle fiber, and this is called type 2A. So this type of muscle fiber sort of sits in the middle, really. It's, it's not type 1 and it's not type 2B. It's sort of a, an in-between or a hybrid. It's a bit of both. Okay, And this particular muscle fiber is quite commonly recruited in activities that are both fast, powerful activities, but also ones that we try and maintain for a long amount of time. So for example, middle distance running would be a great example of this. Now there is some research that suggests that these muscle fibers are the ones that can actually be converted. So for example, if you did a huge amount of marathon training, you could actually convert these muscle fibers into type 1. So you'd actually increase the amount of type 1 fiber you have, and that would obviously make you a better marathon runner. Conversely, you could, through a lot of strength and power training, turn these muscle fibers into type 2B, making you obviously, again, more strong and more powerful. So if we consider all three muscle fibers, we can see that a table like this really allows us to start to see the differences. We can see, for example, that in terms of contraction time, type 1 muscle fibers are the slowest, and then that moves through type 2A, with type 2B being the fastest. And the reason for that is at this part of the table. We can see here that type 1 muscle fibers have high mitochondrial density. They have a lot of mitochondria. They have a huge amount of capillaries, so a good blood supply, and therefore they can generate a huge amount of energy through oxygen or oxidative capacity. So that's why they're quite slow, but they don't fatigue very easily. On the other hand, you can see that type 2B muscle fibers, they do have a low mitochondria density and a low capillary density, because they don't need it. They don't use oxygen. They have a high glycolytic capacity, 
So they use a different fuel source and a different way of producing energy. And this is very quick, which is why they contract very fast. You can see that type 2A are very much in the middle. You can use a bit of both. It can sort of use a bit of everything, and that's why those muscle fibers are sort of the, the in-between or the hybrid. We can also see what effect that has. So we can see that because type 1 muscle, type one muscle fibers do use uh, mitochondria, that's why they don't fatigue very easily, and that's why they're used in aerobic activities. However, type 2B, very low resistance to fatigue. They fatigue really easily. We really only use them for activities less than a minute. That's because they don't use mitochondria. They use a different fuel source, and that runs out very quickly. So a table like this really allows you to look at the differences between the muscle fibers, and that's a really good part because we need to be able to compare and contrast for distinction. Okay, so a final fact about muscle fiber is that the ratio of type 1, type 2A, and type 2B muscle fibers in your body depends on your genetic influence, but it also depends on your training because, of course, you can convert those middle fibers. Now, we can actually, in sports science, work out the ratio of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers that you have in your body. And this is done through a surgical procedure called muscle biopsy, where a small surgical incision is made, a small piece of your muscle is extracted, and this is then analyzed to see the differences between the two. So looking under a microscope, this is what we would be able to see. And you can see here, we can see the type 1 muscle fibers, which are the, uh, the dark red, and we can see the type 2, which are the white muscle fibers. So you can see here this person probably has a 50-50 mix of both. Now in certain sports, studies have been done with athletes and actually looking at how much of muscle fibers they have. We can see here, for example, that distance runners tend to have a high percentage of type 1 muscle fibers, which is of course what they need. We can see that sprinters have a very high proportion of type 2 which again, they need. We can see for activities such as the 800 meters, actually athletes require a little bit of both. So actually your genetics can really decide what sport you are best suited to. Okay, so in summary, there are three muscle fiber types. You need to be able to describe all three, but you also need to be able to explain them. So for merit, you need to explain why they're structured in the way they are. Why is it? that type 1 muscle fibers have a huge amount of mitochondria, for example. And if a distinction, you need to be able to compare and contrast